Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Board of Trustees meeting of July 13th, 2020. If everyone could make leave their standing and pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America. and to, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible. In with liberty, liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. Thank you. Camille, would you please call the roll? Trustee Andino. Present. Trustee Howell. Present. Trustee Lee. Present. Mayor Luisi. I am present. And Deputy Mayor Lang is uh, on a mini vacation this evening and will not be able to join us. Uh, before I go any further, I would just like to make mention that uh, I would kindly ask that at the end of the meeting that we observe a moment of silence for Phil White, Mayor Phil White, who passed away June 28th at the age of 91. As many of you know, he was a mayor for two decades. Um, president of the Westchester Municipal Officers Association, president of the East Chester Pony Cult League, as well as a coach. He also, his, um, his biggest passion was uh, the Tuckahoe History Committee, and as we know, uh, along with Alice, his wife, and those volunteers of that committee, they have amassed a tremendous amount of information and artifacts about um, the village of Tuckahoe. And so I'll just kindly ask, for, again, at the end of this meeting to observe a moment of silence. Of course, I will welcome any uh, comments from the audience. Um, we have no appointments this evening. Um, and we have no presentations this evening, but we do have two public hearings. The first one is the public hearing to consider a proposed local law prohibiting the sale of electronic nicotine delivery products in the village of Tuckahoe. That public hearing has remained open and tonight we will be taking some action on this. Uh, but before we do, uh, may I have uh, the village attorney? Could you please give us some clarification on what's gonna happen tonight, please? Sure, Mr. Mayor. So what's, what's happening is um, back in May, uh, New York State uh, passed, passed a law banning um, flavored, uh, flavored e-cigarettes. And they came out with a statement that says the ban on flavored nicotine vapor products will protect our children who thanks to the tobacco industry's marketing efforts have been using vaping products at alarming rates. Starting today, we will no longer permit big tobacco to target young New Yorkers for a lifetime of nicotine addiction. So this was back in, back in May, uh, late May, uh, that this went into effect. So what we, um, you know, there's been a lot of litigation on this. Uh, so what the boards uh, could do is basically just take no action locally and just follow what, what the state's been doing because they've taken a very, very hard line on this. I believe only four states have taken this type of hard line. Um, to go past what the state has done might be problematic in the courts. That's still, they're still fighting out what you can and can't do with this. Um, but again, the state, if the board's inclined, say, hey, listen, the state has taken a very strong stance on this. It's the law here right now. We may just follow their lead and take no action locally. And that will um, the state, have the state law apply, obviously, to all of your. Okay. So again, so Gary, the, the sticking point, I, I think, and even in my mind, going back to when we first put this on uh, for a public hearing was um, the fact that they was, it was going to so be that, banned that in its entirety. Be. So I know that we were concerned, and I know the members of the uh, Stronger Together Coalition were concerned about the, um, the flavored vapes. So that's been taken out of this, is, is prohibited in the state legislation, correct? Uh-oh, we're frozen? No. <laughs> Well, you and I are folks. <laughs> Gary doesn't look, he looks like he disappeared. We need to take the, Maybe uh, he lost connection. Yeah. But there he is. 
You're on we mute. Can't hear he's, on, he's on mute. You're on mute, Gary. Gary, we can't hear you. Good. Can you hear me now? Now we can hear you. All right. My big moment to shine, and all of a sudden, I lose everybody. <laughs> I usually I not don't say too much, but uh, I didn't think I, I I couldn't believe I bored you to death that quick, man. <laughs> yeah, I'll forget this meeting. <laughs> so again, yeah, the New York State. I don't I don't know if you've heard everything, but uh, New York State's banned the the, the flavored flavored, which uh, which yeah, I that's was targeting the kids. Right, right. But they will be allowed to sell nicotine, regular tobacco flavored. Uh, vape products that is correct yeah nicotine flavored and i believe no flavored um yeah so it's right okay okay and that's new york state law so i guess that's new york that state being... law now okay great thank you so i guess with that being said um i would like to make a motion to withdraw this proposed local law that we have here of banning electronic nicotine delivery products in the village of tucko and all the establishments here within the village will obviously have to abide by state law, New York state law. So do I have a motion? I make a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Trustee Andino. In favor. Trustee Howell. In favor. Trustee Lee. Well, my board, the board knows how I feel about this one, but um, if it would cause a problem with the state, then I guess I'm in favor, but I would rather not have any vape products sold in our village. Mayor Luisi. In favor. And tonight we're going to open a public hearing to consider a proposed local law amending chapter 10 of the village code garbage, trash, and refuse. Modifications include the elimination of rear yard sanitation collection and elimination of the fall curb loose leaf pickup. Do I have a motion to open this public hearing? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Trustee Andino. In favor. Trustee Howell. In favor. Trustee Lee. In favor. Mayor Luisi. In favor. And I'm sure we will have some dialogue about this. Any of the board members like to make any comments at this point in time? Okay. We will welcome uh, opinions and comments from the public at that opportunity to address the board. Um, move us along to the adoption of minutes, which is the approval of minutes of the June 8, 2020 meeting. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second, please? Second. Trustee Andino. In favor. Trustee Howell. In favor. Trustee Lee. In favor. Mayor Luisi. In favor. And it is this time in the meeting that is the first opportunity to address the board on any agenda items. Hi, I have a question regarding the public hearing. Okay. Before you address the board, could you please state your name and address, please? Yes, really. It's Mary O'Donnell, 1 Scarsdale Road, Tuckahoe. Oh, hello, Mary. Good evening. Hi. Good, good. I was wondering when we would have an opportunity to speak at the public hearing. It seems like you moved on to um, approval of minutes. So when, when will the public have an opportunity to talk about the public hearing regarding the rear yard? Right now, Mary. Oh, the floor excellent. is yours. <laughs> Okay, great. Um, I would like to um, say a couple of things. Number one, I really do oppose it. I oppose it for a couple of reasons, and I did send a memo to uh, David expressing my concerns about eliminating rear yard uh, service. And um, the reason I oppose it is a couple of reasons. I think number one, it's been a long-standing service in the village. I mean, it's been going on forever. Mm -hmm. And I think, I, I really do think by eliminating it, what we're gonna do is detract from the attractiveness of the village. And I know the beautification committee has done a marvelous job. I mean, the, the village looks fabulous, fabulous. 
And I think if we eliminate rear yard service, what's going to happen is we're going to see the uh, garbage cans, the receptacles sitting out on the curb, on the street for the day, for, for a whole day. Um, when we're waiting for like homeowners to come back from work and put them away. And I just think that is just going to really make the village, I think it's going to deteriorate the appearance of our neighborhoods. And I think that's really a, a big concern of mine. I think secondly, um, if we have the receptacles out, and I know there are provisions in the chapter 10, which require lids and you know, a certain, uh, the garbage receptacles having certain lids and all of that. But we know that the lids can come apart. We know they can, they can blow in the wind around the, um, around the streets, maybe onto the road. So I think that's an issue. I think it, it could potentially be a hazard with lids and even garbage receptacles blowing around. So that, that's one of my concerns. One is the beautification of the village. And the second is the hazard. Now, having said that, I totally understand the importance of protecting our, 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 our sanitation workers. I mean, that is really paramount. So what I was suggesting in my memo to David is that what the village might consider is adopting a policy whereby uh, the, the rear yard service would not occur unless the homeowners had removed the snow and the ice from the pathway, from the driveway. I think that would be a really good accommodation so that it would not affect the safety of the workers. And I understand, I mean, walking down on snow and ice is not a great thing to do. So I would, I would, su I would suggest that perhaps that be looked at so that it could be, homeowners know, if you don't clear, the snow and the ice, you're not gonna get your sanitation rear yard picked up. So that's one issue. The other point I made in the um, memo to um, David was this. If the issue is the snow and the ice, why would you eliminate rear yard service all year round? I mean, another possibility, if it's really an issue, then perhaps eliminate rear yard service um, in you know, the winter months like we do for snow removal. That would be another possibility. And the final point I want to make is that I really don't understand that for all these years, and I've lived in East Chester for more than 40 years, I'm new to Tuckahoe, six years, but for all the years, we have had, Tuckahoe has had rear yard pickup service. And now all of a sudden, it's a safety issue. And I, I really don't understand that because we know that the winters are getting milder, we don't have as much snow and ice. So I guess, um, I guess I'm really, well, I know I'm really perplexed that we don't, that now all of a sudden it's a worker safety issue, which I think, you know, I'm not denigrating that. I think that's really important. We have to, you know, pay attention to that. So um, that's sort of my, my take on it. And I would appreciate your response. Thank you. Um Safety is one of the concerns, but something that seems, um, which I, I think has not been discussed in terms of this issue is, um, this is a, an attempt to streamline and make the service more efficient. And by that, I mean, it frees up the labor force to do more productive job functions on that particular day that they're picking up trash. Um, and I believe our superintendent of public works might want to address this later on in this meeting, but that is the first and reason, primary reason why this has been brought to the table. It's just to make, to get more productivity, more efficiency out of our workforce. Yes, you're correct about the safety issue, in the winter, but it's a standing order from, from the department that when a walkway or a pathway is unsafe, that individual is not to enter that backyard for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. But first and foremost, it's about efficiency and making this operation more in tune with the 21st century, because we're hoping to eventually have the food scrap pickup curbside 
uh, beginning in 2021. But I, your, I, points are, your points are well taken about the cans being left out. Uh, I, I see that myself where I live here. Uh, it's a point well taken. If I may respond? Sure. In terms of, okay. In terms of priority issues and efficiency, I would say that the priority of the village has to be the, the appearance of the village, the appearance of our neighborhoods, and the hazard that could occur if we move to this. So right. in terms of priority, I would suggest that neighborhoods would um, prefer to have their neighborhoods looking attractive and um, not pose hazards with these you know, cans blown around, which could obviously maybe even be liability issues for the mm -hmm. homeowner. So I just wanted to make that point. The other point I wanted to make is that under the current code, it says under section 1020E, mm -hmm. okay, I think that, well, before I get to that, I think that by, by amending the, the code and going to the elimination of rear yard service, I think it's going to put a burden, a real burden upon the residents. Because under 1020E in the code, it says, all times other than collection times, receptacles must be stored out of public view on the owner's property. So that means if pickup time is at eight, nine, whatever time, collection time, I have to go to work at six in the morning. I have to go to work at seven in the morning. I can't get my receptacles off, this, you know, off the street and put them on my property until I come home at night. So that is a really undue burden on the residents. And I think that's something that, um, and, and, and looking at this, I suspect that the code originally did rear yard service because of the issue of, quote, must be stored out of public view. I think that's been a long time value of the village of Takahoe and by eliminating rear yard service and having the residents put their receptacles out to the curb, we are not going to have them. We are not going to have them stored out of public view. So that's that's my that's my final point at this point. Thank you, Mary. I appreciate that. Uh, Mayor, may I ask a question? Sure. So actually, Frank, do you know how? <clears throat> what percentage of the um, residences, the, you know, houses get rear yard service? Rear side yard uh, that we go actually to, to, to receive yep. the garbage? Yeah. About, I would say about 95%. 95% of the residents, we go back and, and get their garbage. Wow. I got to tell you, Frank, not on 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 Dante Avenue. Never mind. So. Well, that might be a personal choice, Renee. No, I think. Well, I mean, you know, we can hear from residents, but I'll I'll tell you myself. I didn't realize that was an option. Okay. It's in the code. Hello. Anyone else would like to address the board? Yes, Robin Phillips. Yes, good evening. Hi, how are you? I am well, thank you. South High Street. Um, my family's been on High Street since 1936, and the receptacles have been at the side of the house. I submit to you that we have to think about these high, the hills like High Street. Um, the sidewalks, will not, you can't put the garbage receptacles in there because they're on wheels. And the only place they can be is right at the walkway, uh, the entrance, the sidewalk walk, walkway entrance. So you can't get out of your walkway to get to your car. And if you try to put it on anything else, it's gonna roll, it rolls down High Street. Only the bins, like for the trash, we can put those out there. But the, mm -hmm. the garbage receptacles will go right down the hill. 
and this these we have garbage what we call garbage acts or houses on the side of the hill and on south high street i can tell you and i've been here a long time they have been here all that time and i i can't imagine what else we would do you have to think about the steep inclines because those garbage uh, receptacles are going to roll right down the hill or get placed right in front of the walkway which is the only level spot on high street come up and look on both sides it may be unique i don't know about any other steep inclines but i can tell you about south high street and even the driveways are on a little bit of a slant so we don't have a problem with the uh, recycling things because they are in bins that we can sit there and they can pick it up. But the garbage cans are not going to work because they're not going to sit on the sidewalk without rolling down to Main Street. So I would Good come look at this. Probably true at Fairview and some of the others. Right. Yeah, where are you going to put them? Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Ms. Phillips. Is there anyone else that would like to comment? Um, yeah, Mr. Mayor? Yes, please. It's Vito Catania, how are you? Yes, I'm well, thank you. And how is the board? You know, good wishes to all, hope everyone's well. Mm -hmm. my, my Vito, could you just state your address, please, for the record? 203 Dante Avenue. Thank you. Uh, my question, my first question is this, is I agree with both, both young ladies that have uh, given their opinions here. And... Uh, my question is this, when you talk about rear yard service, are you talking about side yards as well? Because to me, rear and side yards are two different things. You could maintain a garbage pail away from the curb on, in, in a lot of homes in the side yards, okay? Uh, and that's, well, at least that's the way mine are. I don't know how everyone else's is, but my, my real question is, you're going to eliminate side yard as well? That's the first question. Then I have a follow-up. Oh, okay. What's, what's the second question? The second question is, uh, in addition to all the negatives that were pointed out by the two previous two speakers, mm -hmm. uh, we have raccoons, okay? Raccoons live in the, in the storm drains. They live in the woods behind our houses. And every once in a while, I have to clean up my own trash at my own garbage pail, which is on my side of my house, because the raccoons got into it. If people start putting their trash out in the evening, on the day before collections, okay, who's going to clean up all the garbage that the raccoons create on the street? And secondly, like the previous speaker said, what's going to happen when raccoons are sitting out on the street all day, and they blow around, the lids blow around. You know, I have, I have my cans in my side yard, and the uh, sanitation people do not put the lid back on the can. I put in my lid three houses away in the fall when the wind's blowing, and that's when it's on my own property. What's it going to be like when, you know, all these garbage cans are out in the street? And quite honestly, like the first speaker said, you know, if, if I wanted to live in a neighborhood where everyone had their garbage in front of the house, I'd live in the Bronx and I'd pay a lot less taxes. So those are my comments. And if you could address them. Thank you. Um, in terms of where the garbage is going to be placed, it's going, again, I, I may be talking out of line here, Frank, if correct me if I'm wrong, but that garbage would either be placed up at the top of your driveway, at the front of your driveway, if you want to put it curbside, it's it's all about eliminating the sanitation worker from walking onto your property into the yard. Exactly. And you know what happens most of the time is just like uh, Vito had said, you know, he has raccoons in the back and, and animals and, and rodents. And, you know, we deal with the same thing virtually almost every day. When we start a routine, we start at 6.30 in the morning. So many times of the year, we have three hours of darkness. And that becomes very dangerous uh, in many ways. So we just, I just need to consider that as a superintendent as well. My concern is for my men. And, and that's why I'm here to debate a lot of what is being said. 
uh, you, in the winter months, you can't tell when is that. When again, we're there at 6:30 in the morning. No one is out shoveling or de-icing at 6:30 in the morning, but we are still there picking up your garbage. We can't tell if there's an ice, a black ice situation on a driveway. We can't tell if there's ice on a walkway at that time of the morning because no one really has their lights on. That is my concern. We've had a lot of accidents over the years. I'm just trying to prevent them. You know, we are upping our pickup. We pick up every single day. My men are sometimes going twice to that same home the same day on the same route to pick up recycling, to pick up garbage, to pick up uh, bulk, to pick up furniture share house, to pick up yard waste, to pick up metals, electronics, cardboard, bottles and cans. We pick up more than a lot of other municipalities pick up and we're adding on and I need to just make it safer for the men. That's all I'm trying to do. And if we could figure out a way to do that, I'm open. Frank, that's, that's absolutely completely understood and safety of the crew is always of the highest priority. Uh, as, as the first speaker had said, maybe in situations, maybe in the winter time, maybe you suspend it when there's ice and snow conditions. But to do it all year, it's going to really be detrimental to the look of our village. Uh, the beautification committee, uh, they do a wonderful job. You guys do a great job cleaning the streets and removing the trash. But, you know, to have, you know, raccoons taking the gut, because the raccoons are there all year. You know, they're not only there on the icy days, and there's going to be litter in the street, and then you really do want your guys standing there cleaning up when a raccoon destroys someone's trash or eats through their black bags, uh, it, it's, you know, it's, it's not a good thing. And it will really be detrimental to the look at a village. I understand your problem. And I ask that you guys consider coming up with another solution to that problem because it is a legitimate problem. And that Thank be possible injuries. Thank that you, Vito. I mean, that's the, that's the whole reason why we're having this is the first uh, public hearing that we're having on it. So, you know, the board is is very, very interested in getting uh, feedback from the community. So thank you. If, if I may also add, um, Mr. Mayor, if I may add a comment. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm curious as to what is the data that substantiates the claim that sanitation workers are being injured perhaps more recently than in the past because we know in the past this has been going on forever rear yard so what happened that prompted this proposal what what is the data that shows there's x number of injuries that have occurred that have prompted this proposal so that's one question um, the, the, the other question is, and I understand, I completely understand the safety of the, of the workers, and I'm totally on board with that. Is it not possible, I mean, the superintendent stated that it's difficult to see the ice and the snow on the driveway at 6.30 in the morning. I understand that, but isn't there a way to kind of figure that out? And getting back to one of my other points is, why can't we have a policy, as Scarsdale has, that says, if the snow and the ice is not removed from your driveway or your rear, your, you know, your, your, your driveway, your pathway, your, you know, to your rear yard, your sanitation is not going to be picked up. I mean, why can't we just have that policy, make it public, let everybody know, and, and, and deal with it in that way? And the other question I have is, I'm really surprised. Where are the civic associations here tonight? I mean, how is this publicized? Where, where, I mean, I, I live at Riverview, so it doesn't even affect me. I just like the village. I, as the previous speaker said, Vito said, the beautification committee has done a fabulous job. The village looks awesome, awesome. And this is, as I said earlier, is gonna uh, detract from the appearance of the village. So like, how is this publicized? I don't, you know, where are the civic associations in Tuckahoe out here tonight saying, you know, we don't want this, or we do want this, or whatever they want to say. How is this publicized? How is this made known? Um, well, it was announced at our last village board meeting that we would have be, be having this public hearing opening this evening. 
that's one way. Then our agenda is on our website. So if people um, are, are interested to see what are we discussing in any particular month, they would go to, to the village website. And I am sure that social media has played a, uh, a huge factor in uh, being, uh, this information being put out there to the residents as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other comments from the public? I do. Yes. State Hi, Karen address, Camp please. Hi. Hi, everyone. Karen Campanile, to place. How are you? Hello. Good evening, Karen. So I think everybody before me kind of looked at my paper because they basically said everything I wanted to say. <laughs> um, but a couple of other things that I was also in, in echo what Vito has said as well with the raccoons. Um, we, we get raccoons all the time. I have my ring camera. It goes off every single night. And there's one, there's three, there's four, there's a bunch every single night. We have possums. And then when that happens, if it's all over the street, we're going to end up getting, and I live near a wooded area too. And with that is also going to come rats or mice or any other rodent and start rifling through the garbage. <laughs> uh, my, besides the other things that Mary has said, Vito has said, and Lovely had said, um, the other concern I have is for our elderly and our disabled. How are they going to bring these cans out if they have trash and they're dragging them to the curb? How, you know, I, I get EPW if there's an issue of liability, there's, there's got to be a different way of handling this. Um, but to expect even our elderly and our disabled to get those trash cans down to the end of their driveway the night before, sometimes when it's dark out as well, is, is going to be a challenge for them. What, what do we do about them? You can't pick and choose which house you're going to do and which house you're not going to do. Mm -hmm. so this, that's also another concern that I have. Good point, Karen. Thank you. Again, we are soliciting comments from the public before the board makes the final decision. So, again, the more feedback that we get, the, the better informed we will be in making our decision. Mr. Mayor, I just wanted to point out to Mary's point that the current code uh, says that trash will not be picked up if the path isn't clear. So, that's already no, I, in the code. I, I think I said that earlier, but yeah, if Exactly. If the path is unsafe, that garbage is not going to be picked up. That's a standing order. Is there anyone else that would like to comment? Hey, one, one more just comment. Uh, just a suggestion. If the darkness is an issue in the wintertime with the people going to the side yards, uh, maybe they could just wear a simple headlamp. Headlamps are 10 bucks. Uh, for anybody who goes out at night, uh, I go in the woods at three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning. Uh, there's a lot more trip hazards in the woods than there are in our driveways. Uh, headlamp really works. So just a thought and a consideration. Hi there. Good evening. Vincent Santo, 29 Sylvan Avenue. Uh, question for Frank. So I think one of the first uh, points that was brought up was a safety concern, which I understand. Uh, the second point that was brought up was uh, more around efficiency of resources right that fact that if you know the guys and the, the crew are able to collect garbage faster they can be utilized for other things um two-part question so what exactly exactly is that efficiency we're trying to capture and how is it going to be measured and thirdly what is the benefit to the community like like, like i previously said um you know we are picking up just about anything and everything and we're sometimes going back twice to the same location that same day. Um, you know, food scrap recycling is something we want to take on in January. And there are just other added things that we'd like to just reschedule and make it safe and do more for the village. You know. Um, so, and, and this is Julie Santo. Uh, we're, we're doubling up on this one. Um, I, I really appreciate the idea of, uh, of more efficiency. I think what it comes down to is that I'm assuming you have a certain number of man slash woman hour during the week that we need to figure out what, you know, how to best utilize. Um, and um, I appreciate all the comments that have been mentioned. I think everyone has some, some really uh, good points there. Uh, but I think it would be helpful to just understand like here, is the menu, quote unquote, of all the things that we do at the DPW, 
and potentially we can help prioritize as a community. So for example, if, if, um, if we are told that um, by giving up, uh, bringing up, uh, bringing my garbage to the curb, I can get the food scraps pickup. Like some of us might be like, yeah, this is, this is amazing. Some of us might, might think that it's not such a great idea. And maybe we can think of solutions, for example, to exempt seniors or, you know, people who have disabilities. Uh, but, but I think it's a, it's maybe a bit of a larger question, which is there's a certain number of man hours and a budget. And, and how does the community want to best spend that money um, at the DPW? So, you know, to me, I would, I would suggest that's one of those things that's up for discussion, right? Is this how, where we want to spend our money or do, do we want to do something else with it? Well, that's exactly so. I mean, that's why we're having this. Um, so I could get ideas, I could get input from everybody and uh, figure out how we can move forward really to benefit everybody. It's not just about the Department of Public Works, it's about the residents and, and the commercial establishments as well. And if I also may mention, um, I think this was brought up earlier, but um, I think some of the new residents are not necessarily benefiting from this. So in opening up this conversation, I think everyone has a voice in saying, you know, how they actually want to spend their tax money for with DP, DPW services. Some of them are not benefiting from this right now. If I may uh, make a comment, um, Ms. Santo. Yep. If more people, uh, the more residents that participate in the food scrap recycling program, the result of that will be uh, fewer kitchen refuse. So theoretically, um, kitchen garbage will only have to be picked up once a week, which will allow uh, DPW to now focus on picking up food scraps at curbside, um, as opposed to the residents that are participating in the program right now, they have to take those uh, scraps down to the DPW yard. So that's one of um, the points that we're trying to make, or one of the things that was considered in, in this uh, proposal of eliminating the rear yard pickup. Hi, it's Vincent Santo again. I think maybe to, to summarize the point that's trying to be made is we're being asked to give up a benefit and it's not entirely clear what we'll receive for that benefit. And so anything that you can do to illuminate and help uh, the community make that, you know, weigh that cost benefit, I think would be helpful. Well, I, I know the uh, Environmental and Sustainability Committee been out there uh, beating the pavement about this program uh, going back to late last year. So, yep. again, the more people that participate in food scrap recycling, uh, the less kitchen garbage you will put out, and that will allow our department to make that pick up curbside. Yeah, and I would say just one last note. We don't want to monopolize this, but, but I... I completely understand what you're saying and I completely agree with it um, and I, I would be you know if someone was going to tell me that you know putting my garbage myself on uh, the front of my lawn in order to get scrap pickup I think that would be a fantastic idea and I suspect right now the program is not as popular as it, it could be because of COVID and people basically yeah. sheltering in place so but, but yeah. thank you for clarifying that thank you and, and also another thing, which I also forgot to mention is, if we do reduce the amount of kitchen garbage that we dump, then that will reduce our tipping fees, which is a cost savings to the village as well, as opposed to the food scrap where, you know, we're recycling materials and getting compost back for use by the villages. So, you know, it's, a, it's a, again, it's one of those things that we're looking at, and that's one of the reasons that we're looking at this. Um, I would like to ask a question. Um, uh, Mary, if I could just allow someone else that hasn't oh, asked sure. any questions. Absolutely. First, I just, yeah, I just wanted to follow up on the food scrap issue. So when you get around to it, let sure. me know. Sure, thank you. Is there anyone else in the, in the room uh, that would like to make a comment that hasn't done so already? Anne-Marie, you're, you're, you're on mute. I think Anne-Marie is waving. She's talking, but she's on mute. 
we unmute her? Can you hear yeah. me now? Yeah. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I couldn't find the mute button. Um, mm -hmm. I came in a little late, so I hope I'm not repeating any of my questions. Mm -hmm. um, was anyone ever injured that uh, we started this discussion? Uh, I mean, do we have injuries from DPW in the past? Yes. On garbage, pi on garbage pickup? There has. There has been? Okay. The next question is, you, there are many, many two and three family homes in Tuckahoe. And a lot of landlords do not live there, which means we'd have to rely on these tenants to put the garbage out, which you know what happens with that. And that's going to be another issue. And my next question is Bronxville and East Chester have pickup. Am I correct? Or do they have to do curbside? They have pickup. They have pickup. So we've had this, uh, I mean, I was born in Tuckahoe. I've never, why to change is how much are we saving by doing this? It's, it's really more than just the savings. It's, it's how we can move forward and expand on our schedule and make it Move safe. forward. So is Tuckahoe right. and Bronxville having an issue with moving forward that they have, are they gonna, are they thinking of this also? I don't know what Bronxville and East Chester are thinking. But a lot of municipalities don't pick up what we pick up. And we, of, do, okay. we work a full day. I mean, that's how hard my men are working at DPW. They don't go home okay. at 12 o'clock. They work a full day. This is stopped eight years ago. Contractually, they need to work a full day now. And a full day, they are working. Okay. So does Bronxville work a full day and East Chester work a full day? I don't know. I can't answer for them. Okay. Well, that's what I'm saying. You, you have to look into the surrounding areas of where we are because we're not upstate. Upstate has where they have to put their garbage out. But of course, upstate pays half the amount of taxes we pay in Lower Westchester. So I would look at the surrounding areas because we do pay very high taxes here for that benefit. So to take it away, to take it away is not right either. Again, we're not taking anything away. We're really adding to the schedule. Uh, if you take Bronxville, for example, you bought a Bronxville. They charge for bulk pickup. You have to call Bronxville. We just go there every week and collect bulk, bulk pickup. Oh, uh, listen, you know, I'm not and complaining. We also, including bulk pickup, you know, we also collect furniture for the needy. So you have to look at really what we're doing and how thorough our schedule is. And you can't compare it really with a lot of other municipalities. And I'm not going to mention them because everybody works hard in DPW. And that's my job to promote that. Um, I'm just letting you know what we do here. If you look at our schedule intensively, you will see that what we do on a weekly basis. Frank, I'm not disagreeing with you. I, I, understand, I understand where you're coming from. My beef is that when people look for a home and purchase a home or stay in a town, one of the benefits, like my son was thinking of moving upstate, and he's like, oh, you got to bring your garbage to this place or you got to put it out. Oh, I like it closer down here because we have great service in our village and in our towns. So that's why they purchase homes. And then to take it away when you already had it, that's a little hard to do. What we're trying to do is accommodate everything we do. That's all I'm asking. Yeah. You know, I'm asking for information from everybody so we can make this work. We're all mm -hmm. looking to make this work. That's really it. That's and why this is an open forum. And they put their garbage out the night before instead of in the morning, and they don't put it out in barrels. I have three people on my block. I don't think they realize that they, you know, the people will go in the back. Everyone else knows that. And they put their bags out on the curb. And let me tell you, chicken bones, it's all over the place. And that's only three on the whole entire block. Imagine the whole block putting it out. They don't put them in barrels. They just put the whole plastic bag out. Hello, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Uh, I'd like to say something. This is Mike Dardano uh, from six, 62 Chestnut, although today I'm in Putnam Valley on Lake Oscawana, so that's why you can see the nice lake <laughs> behind me. Uh, I think the points everyone making are, are well taken, um, but there's one thing no one's mentioned, which I'm actually happy about, is the leaf pickup, because as part of the environmental committee, I think picking up the leaves is a waste. Uh, it's, it's detrimental to the environment with uh, 
the trucks that Frank runs, as efficient as Frank is in his department, those trucks are, are pigs when it comes to what they put out in the, uh, for their fumes. And um, we really should be mulching in place. I know the mayor is, is into that. So I'm, I'm actually for the um, no picking up of the leaves. As far as the other stuff with the garbage, I, I, I'm agreeing with everyone else. I think there's all very valid, uh, val valid points. I have to admit, when I first moved here, I was shocked that they were coming up and picking the garbage up. I wasn't used to that where, I, where I've lived in the past. But um, I think the leaf thing, I would be for that because I think it's a waste and I think that the time could be put to better use and I think the leaves could be excellent mulch for your um, yards and um, I'd like to see that happen. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Is there anyone else in the room that has not spoken or commented? Okay, Mary O'Donnell, if you're still here. I'm still here. Uh, getting back to the food scraps. Yes. Uh, has the highway department considered picking up the food scraps uh, when they pick up the recyclables? Is there a way to uh, have an efficiency of pickup in terms of recyclables and food scraps? Has that been considered? Um, That's a good question. I have another one after this. Okay. I, I believe because the program was just initiated at the beginning of the year, um, and we're just trying to get residents more involved in this program. But then as was mentioned earlier, we had this thing called COVID-19, which sort of shut the door on so many operations around the world. So I don't know if, if it stumbled or fell along the way, um, but that is something that we're, we are hoping to do starting January 2021 20, is picking up those food scraps curbside. We're fortunate to have the county um, we'll be picking up food scraps from the DPW yard beginning of September. So it's going to uh, alleviate our uh, trucks having to take the, the scraps up the line to be composted. But fortunately, we have the county involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I do want to commend the village for the food scraps program. I think that's a really good program. I'm, I, I, I commend... Uh, the superintendent and the, and the board for, for init, initiating that. And I hope it is successful. I think it's well, great, great. The environmental committee and the sustainability committee, they get, they get uh, kudos as well, Mary. I know, I know, I appreciate that. My second point is um, the superintendent mentioned that yes, there were, um, the question was asked were, um, were uh, uh, sanitation workers injured? And the, the answer was yes. My question then is what percentage of uh, sanitation workers have been injured. How has it changed over the last years? Has it incre increased? If it has, why has it increased? Um, so that's, that's uh, I'm, I'm just curious about that. Frank? Um, I can't give you a percentage, uh, but I can tell you, you know, we just had an incident about a year and a half ago uh, mm -hmm. where, where one of my men um, it was early morning, almost got pinned between a building and a sanitation truck. Uh, that put a scare in me, and that just made me wonder how we could make changes to make it safer for them. And yet, with the growing amount of pickup that, that's happening every week, every year, I'm sorry, uh, with Tuckahoe DPW, uh, I, this is just one of the things that I'm looking into. And again, this is really just an open forum, so I could get uh, opinions from everybody. So, so are you saying then that there was no injury to a sanitation worker picking up uh, sanitation from a rear yard or a side yard recently? There has been trip and falls. There has been sprains, uh, bruises. And, and again, most recently, about a year, and a, a year ago, one of my men almost got pinned up against a sanitation truck in a building. Thank you. I, I think, in, uh, if I may, I think we're, in, the, in the case of the liability, uh, the attempt here is to be proactive rather than reactive. Let's not wait for something very serious to happen to one of the workers. And then we say, hey, what should we do about this? So again, it's one of those things that we're looking at. And again, because of the comments that, that we're receiving from the residents, that's what's going to help us uh, as we move along with this. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mary. Is there anyone else in the room that has not um, offered a comment yet? Okay. 
then that allows us to move on to resolutions. Can I get a second comment, Mr. Mayor? I, I, I didn't reply because I heard the persons who didn't previously comment. Very quickly, okay. sure. Manu again? Yes. And I just wanted to comment on the leaf. Uh, leaves are only picked up curbside, I, I believe about five weeks a year. They're done very efficiently. Uh, they're picked up, they're all recycled. They're brought, I believe, to the town recycling facility where people can go and get mulch for free. Many of the homes in this village have very small pieces of property. Fortunately, we have lots of trees. There is not enough property to mulch leaves on in most homes. And if you think that the leaves are gonna get mulched into lawns and not blow around the village and make the place look terrible, you're kidding yourself. People will not pick up the leaves. Well, it'll just get worse and worse and worse. And secondly, uh, leaves on the street, as some of you may know, some of you may not know, if you park a car over a pile of leaves, the uh, catalytic converter could set the leaves on fire, then you have a car fire. And I'd hate to see that happen in our lovely village. Thank you. Thank you, Vito. Thank you, Vito. I think, I think every year, Frank, um, that's one of his words of caution about parking over the piles of leaves that are left in the street, is about the catalytic converter. Yeah, very important. <laughs> Mr. Mayor? Some people hear that, most people don't. Well, as my mother used to say, a word to the wise. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, may I, may I say one last? Uh, sure. Last, are you planning to keep this hearing open for? Oh, yes, yes. This, okay. hearing, this is the first night. So may, may, I, may I request, would it be possible to have even just like a, a not today, obviously, but maybe next meeting, just a quick overview of there's these many people working at DPW, and here's the number of man hours we have per week, and here's what it's spent on. Um, because I, I think what I'm hearing is like there, there's a few things going on, and there's obviously safety, which is, uh, which is essential. But there's also if if we if we give up something where we may get something else, and if we want to do something new, then something's going to have to give, right? That's just basic budgeting, and I think right. even just for us to have that information and understand, like this is what we have to play with. Uh, what are we willing to give up or not? Uh, would I think would be helpful for uh, the public to understand? Because then it's going to put it in tangible, you know, dollars and cents. No one wants to see their taxes go go up, right? So um, mm -hmm. we can we can make a, an informed decision. Okay, that is a point well taken, Julie. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? Okay, now we're going to move on to resolutions. Resolution number one is authorizing the submission of an application to the Westchester Urban County Consortium for the Community Development Block Grant Program for Playground Upgrades at the Main Street Park in the amount of $362,000, 50% of the total project cost or $181,000 would be contributed by the village. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Mr. Mayor, can I say something about this? Please. Um, just so everyone knows that the village recently rejoined the Urban County Consortium, uh, which allowed us to re-enter the program and put these grants in. So we are looking for feedback from the village residents if this is something that we wanna do. In regards to this first one, um, it does seem expensive, but it would do would be at the Main Street Park, it would be playground equipment. Uh, it would be three new sets of equipment, one for two to five year olds, one for five to 12 year olds and a new um, swing set that's up to all safety standards, as well as some aesthetic work around the park and all the new, um, the new flooring or the new, the new ground, the new safety ground. So um, with this program, we, had a, we have to endorse the applications, but we are looking for any kind of resident feedback in regards to this. Um, the application does look for kind of resident feedback and if they want us to do these types of things, which I do hope they do. I believe the board is 100% behind this, but I just wanted to make sure that's out there. Great. Thank you, David. Trustee Andino. 
In favor. Trustee Howell. In favor. Trustee Lee. In favor. Mayor Luisi. In favor. Resolution number two is authorizing the submission of an application to the Westchester Urban County Consortium for the Community Development Block Grant Program for ADA ramp and sidewalk improvements in the amount of $500,000, 50% of the total project cost or $250,000 would be contributed by the village. Do I have a motion? So no. Do I have a second? Second. Trustee Andino. In favor. Trustee Howell. In favor. Trustee Lee. In favor. Mayor Luisi. In favor. Resolution number three is authorizing the mayor to sign an agreement with the Community Fund of Bronxville East Chester Tuckahoe Incorporated for a grant in the amount of $8,000 for the operation of the Tuckahoe Trolley. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Trustee Andino. In favor. Trustee Howell. In favor. Trustee Lee. In favor. Mayor Luisi. In favor. Resolution number four is authorizing the mayor to sign an agreement with the Community Fund of Bronxville East Chester Tuckahoe Incorporated for a grant in the amount of $12,300 for the Tuckahoe Police Youth Community Engagement and the DARE program. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Trustee Andino. In favor. Trustee Howell. In favor. Trustee Lee. In favor. Mayor Luisi. In favor. And uh, you, you just cannot thank the community fund for their generosity, uh, especially during these times. So thank you to the community fund. Uh, resolution number five is authorizing the modification of the overtime parking restriction on River Street from a two hour to a four hour limit. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Trustee Andino. In favor. Trustee Howell. In favor. Trustee Lee. In favor. Mayor Luisi. In favor. Resolution number six is setting a public hearing for September 14th, 2020 to consider a proposed local law to allow the adoption of a budget for the fiscal year commencing June 1, 2021 that requires a real property tax levy in excess of the amount otherwise prescribed in general municipal law section 3-C. In other words, this will allow us to override the tax cap if need be in the next budget cycle. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Trustee Andino. In favor. Trustee Howell. In favor. Trustee Lee. In favor. Mayor Luisi. In favor. Resolution number seven is authorizing 21 Columbus LLC to make improvements on village property as required by their planning and zoning board approvals. Such improvements shall also consist of drop curb curbing work at the proposed crosswalk, new tree replacement, installation, and replacement of a street lamp. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Trustee Andino. In favor. Trustee Howell. In favor. Trustee Lee. In favor. Mayor Luisi. In favor. And 21 Columbus uh, is the site of the um, Future Learning Center, which is the site of the Epstein's uh, store right now. Resolution number eight is authorizing the cancellation of the August 10th Board of Trustee meeting. Do I have a motion? So Do I have a second? 
Second. Second. <laughs> Roy. <laughs> Trustee Andino. In favor. Trustee Howell. In favor. Trustee Lee. In favor. Mayor Luisi. In favor. On, um, on a serious note, though, obviously, <laughs> if there is if there is a village business that needs to be conducted of, of a uh, serious nature, we will be meeting. So we just uh, we're giving ourselves a week off, I guess. Uh, the last resolution, number nine, is authorizing the approval of vouchers in the amount of seven hundred and eight thousand eight hundred and sixty three dollars and twelve cents. Do I have a motion? So moved. Grab a second. Second. Trustee Andino. In favor. Trustee Howell. In favor. Trustee Lee. In favor. Mayor Luisi. In favor. Uh, at this time, do we have any discussion items? Okay. And that'll bring us to the departmental reports to the board. And I will begin with the Chief of Police, Chief John Costanzo. Good evening, Mayor, members of the board. Uh, just, just one announcement, really. Uh, Lower Westchester has really been hit hard with vehicle break-ins, as well as stolen vehicles in the last several weeks. Uh, some organized groups coming up from the Bronx, as well as from Connecticut and New Jersey, uh, all working independently, but really hitting Westchester very, very hard. I just implore our residents to please hide their belongings, um, lock their doors, and please, please do not leave your keys or key fobs in the car. Uh, some incidents have led to uh, some vehicle pursuits throughout Westchester, putting both the police and the public in, at risk. Uh, there's been shots fired at the police in the oh, yes. So uh, just please lock up your car and, and, and Get your keys and key fobs uh, into the house with you. And then just uh, a, a thank you to the community fund uh, for, for their grant and uh, allowing us to have our DARE program and many of our community outreach uh, programs that we do. So thank you to the community fund. And I ask the members of the public to please support them. That's all I have, Mark. Thank you, Chief. Uh, our Superintendent of Public Works, Mr. Frank DeMarco. All right, um, Mayor, board members. Uh, first and foremost for me, uh, my condolences for the entire White family. Uh, you know, he was a great and interesting man and always a pleasure to talk to, especially when it came to history of, of Tuckahoe. Uh, so he'll be well missed. I know I'll miss him. Um, going on to TPW work, uh, Main Street, the second segment of Main Street that is between Fairview and Columbus will be paved finally and completed the week of the 20th. Uh, I don't have the exact day yet, but next week they're going to pave the section between Fairview and uh, Columbus Avenue finally. Um, and that'll be all done. Everything was delayed because of the, the, the pandemic and uh, we couldn't, Con Edison couldn't get into the establishments to sec secure gas hookups. So it, with that said, uh, they couldn't continue to gas main work. Uh, but once they, they were allowed to get back into it, a lot of these establishments and residents uh, gave them the opportunity to finish. Um, right now, we're just uh, maintaining parks, landscaping, and working on our paving schedule for the year. Uh, but other than that, you know, we're just always trying to keep busy. That's all I have. Okay, thank you, Frank. Um, I do not see John Galuzzi in the room. No? Okay. Camille, do you have anything for us this evening? Yes, Mayor. First, uh, the clerk's office would like to send our deepest condolences also to the White family. And we want to remind everyone that the village office is and has been committed to doing our best to provide the finest service to the public. We have every precaution in place to ensure the safety of our deputy clerk, Jackie Peretti, and all those visiting our office. Every call, every email, and all inquiries are attended to promptly. As per the governor, village taxes are due July 21st without penalty. Please note, 
that payments received from July 22 to the 31st will be subject to 5% penalty. So please, if you have not paid your taxes, try to get them in by July 21st to avoid a penalty. If you need assistance, feel free to email me at cdesavo at takahoe-ny.com. That's it. Thank you, Camille. You're welcome. Um, and also, if I may just add that when you do, if you have to come up to Village Hall, there is plenty of hand sanitizer available for you. Um, and there's the floor is marked out in terms of uh, social, safe social distancing and so on and so forth. So um, I commend uh, the, the village, uh, David Burke specifically, for getting that uh, plexiglass partition in place up at the clerk's office in the, and as well as in the building department. So just trying to make everybody feel safe when they come don't up. don't forget your mask. And don't forget that mask. That's right. Um, Gary Gersten, do you have anything for us? I just uh, want to send my condolences also to the White family. Uh, Mayor White appointed me back in 2001, so he's he's held a special spot in my heart. And uh, condolences to the whole family. Thank you, Gary. David Burke. A uh, quick update on a couple of things. Um, when we're speaking about Village Hall, we are now on summer hours um, from July 4th to uh, Labor Day. Um, so that means that we are open <clears throat> from 8.30 to 4.30, Monday through Thursday, but we're going to close at 1 o'clock on Fridays. And that is up until the Friday before Labor Day. Uh, the Tuckahoe Trolley started this Friday. Um, that was our first time out. It went well. We asked that any members of the public you practice social distancing. We do require a mask on the trolley. Um, at this point, we're just running it on Fridays just to kind of see how it goes, um, but hope to expand that service a little more um, in the next few weeks. Uh, Tuckahoe Farmer's Market is going strong on Sundays, so um, go down there and visit them. And the last thing I had, and the, probably the most important is, is uh, the census. We are at 63.5% of respondents of the village. Um, well off other communities, much better than other communities, but when we talk about CDBG grants and how much some of these projects cost, um, we really need to get our census numbers up because that is direct funding to the village in regards to a lot of different programs. So tell your friends, tell your neighbors, go out there. It is very simple. It's just uh, a couple of questions and um, done very easily right on the computer. That's it. Thank you. And I believe the census will be completed um, October 31st, if memory serves me well. So please, um, it's real easy. You can do it online. At some point in time, they will be coming door to door to knock uh, to, to try to take a, an accurate census. So please, if you want to avoid that, just participate via, via online. And with that uh, miscellaneous business, our next village board meeting will be September 14th at... <laughs> do this in Village Hall or the community center at some point. Um, just hope that the virus continues to spread away and out from the village and away from the world so that we can get back to, uh, to those type of meetings. Uh, with that being said, um, it's now time for the Board of Trustee Memory Reports, and I'm going to begin with Trustee Omira Andino. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. So I'll start with the, the library report, which is very lengthy, so I will condense it a little. If you um, need additional information, you can go on the website, and the entire list of programs is listed there. Uh, but just to let you know, the window pickup, um, at the library is now open uh, Mondays 2 to 7 and to, uh, Tuesdays through Fridays 2 to 5. So you can place a hold online and you can also mm -hmm. for pickup or call the library for assistance. Um, there are some summer reading programs uh, that you can register for, the, for children, teens, and adults. The summer story time schedule through August 21st is for children, uh, infants, ages uh, up to two, on um, Tuesdays at 11 a.m. and ages two to five Fridays at 11 a.m. And if you have ever heard 
Miss Elaine, I do story time. It's really a treat, so I encourage parents, especially you have your kids at home now, uh, to get on online and, um, and participate. They're also offering yoga for kids from ages two to five at 11 a.m., Wednesday, 11, uh, July 22nd and August 12th, and also for kids ages six to 10 at 4 p.m., Tuesday and Wednesday, July 22nd and August 12th. Um, so you also have some programs for the teens, virtual, um, the Drop Everything and Read, virtual Deer at, Public Libra at Tuckahoe Public Library on Monday, July 20th at noon. Uh, join them for a Zoom book discussion on the Wish Tree by Catherine Applegate. Um, you also have a three-day online babysitting workshop that I encourage um, your teens to go to on August 5th through 7th at 10 a.m. This is an introduction to babysitting course that includes uh, learning how to interview, communication skills, the ages and, and uh, stages of young babies and toddlers, um, certificates of completion will be emailed after the workshop. And there are some adult programs that you can look up. There's a Fred Astaire uh, presentation on the life of Fred Astaire. There's uh, the Triumph of, of Women, Women's Suffrage with David Osborne on July 30th. And uh, meet the author Ellen Marie Wiseman on August 10th, among other things. Uh, so go on to the library on the site and get some more information there. I also want to um, offer my condolences to the White family as well. Uh, when I was first um, elected in, into office on Aug in uh, 2018, um, uh, Phil White was very um, warm toward me and welcoming, and so was his wife. So I, I grew to admire and appreciate them early on. I also want to thank the Community Fund for the countless grants that they've offered the village, including ECAP and those that were mentioned earlier. Um, those are much needed funds, and so I do encourage the community who can to donate to the Community Fund because they do a lot of good work here. Um, let's see, uh, we, we did talking of, speaking of testing, COVID testing. Uh, so the last, at the last meeting, I talked about the testing that we did at, on June 4th and 5th at the Shiloh Baptist Church. Um, we also uh, had testing again on J June 25th and 26th. So we've totaled um, a little over 300 people who've been tested in the village. And um, when I looked at the numbers, the number of people who tested positive was very low, um, as well as the number of people who had the antibodies. It was actually a, around nine people out of uh, the 300 that had the antibodies, which lets us know that we are very susceptible still. And um, as um, Dr. Howell, Trustee Howell, reminds us all the time, uh, COVID is not yet gone. So we need to continue to be vigilant and to continue wearing our masks and, and taking all the precautions that we've been taught to do. Um, so the census was already mentioned. I just want to reiterate, please respond to the census. It equals dollars um, to the village. So we can't stress enough how much. I didn't even know we were at 63% already, uh, David. I thought we were less. Uh, let's see. I also want to follow up to my conversation last month. Uh, regarding uh, some conversations that we've been having in the village regarding uh, racial issues and inequities. Um, I'm grateful that there were a number of people that agreed to come together and talk about what are some of the things that we can do. And I thank the library who's always willing to be the conduit for these conversations. So we, we had our first meeting and we threw around uh, some issues that we wanted to tackle as a, as a village and um, see how we get the community at large involved. So we talked about two things that we can start with. And one of those is a book reading of uh, a book by Robin D'Angelo called uh, White, Priv White Fragility. And so we were looking at how we want to format that book reading and we want to invite everyone, the entire board, community uh, to join us. We will also be inviting uh, Eastchester and Bronxville to join us. Um, it's a really good book with discussion, um, and I think we have a lot to learn from the book. The other thing that we're looking at doing is holding a workshop titled Undoing Racism. Um, it's a three-day workshop that's uh, geared toward everyone in the community of all different races, 
that um, we were looking to have in August, and they're actually not mm -hmm. hold these these courses. So we're we're trying to secure a day in August because, as you can imagine, they're very busy right now. And the last thing I want to let you guys know is that today I got a call from Stephanie Palmer, one of the residents' uh, mom, who uh, insisted I had to go to Stephanie Palmer's birthday party today at, at five, four o'clock. So I, I want to give Stephanie a shout out. Uh, she didn't take no for an answer, so I was there and celebrated with her. So happy birthday, Stephanie. And that's it from me, Mayor. Thank you, Trustee Andino. How many cupcakes did you bring? <laughs> well, it was last minute. She called me while I was oh, at work. Okay. Um, you have to be here, and I'm not taking no for an answer. So, you know, <laughs> when, well, you're, when you're that age, you don't say no to them. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Well, thank you. Trustee How. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Uh, I would also like to send my condolences to the White family. Um, Joe White was just a, a really fun guy to talk to, um, amazing history, knowledge of our uh, village. And um, at his uh, viewing, I was chatting with his daughter who uh, told me the story of, um, you know, one of his last wishes was to be driven through the village again. And in particular, he wanted to see the new trees that were put along Columbus. Um, I think that was actually quoted in a newspaper article, but I, I just thought it was a very touching story and I can't. I can't imagine anybody uh, who really loved the village so much as he did. So he's going to be very much missed. Um, a couple things on the planning and zoning board. Uh, the next planning board meeting will be July 21st. Uh, we have a couple interesting, or actually one interesting thing on the um, agenda. There's going to be a uh, for the expansion of the medical office, which is housed right now in the Masonic building right next to Main, um, the Village Hall on Main Street. And uh, part of that will require additional parking. Um, and what the people are asking uh, is they've bought the lot at 22 Underhill. They're wanting to turn that into a parking lot and um, potentially switching with the other parking lot that's adjacent to it, which right now the village owns. So um, it's an application which requires another parking lot in the main downtown area. Um, and then, you know, last meeting we appointed uh, a new uh, contractor, uh, but I don't think that we did a formal introduction of her, David, did we? Of Carolina? <laughs> um, no, we did not do a formal introduction. All right, so I thought it might just be nice to mention that uh, we have a new person who is overseeing the building department. Uh, her name is Carolina uh, Newburn Fonseca. Uh, she has, comes to us very experienced. Um, she actually started uh, working uh, in, as an architect in Sao Paulo, Brazil, which is where she is from, but she has lived in the United States for a long time and, and has additionally a lot of experience working on various projects in the city. Um, so I think we're very lucky to have her. I've seen her uh, in action at the planning and zoning boards and see the uh, kind of really unique contributions she can make. Uh, and I'm very excited about her being here and looking forward to working with her in the, in the future. So welcome, Carolina. Awesome. I um, also wanted to let people know that we decided to, I think I mentioned this at the last meeting, we decided for the uh, Tuckahoe Challenge this year, which is traditionally held the weekend after Labor Day in September, that um, for safety reasons, we thought it was best to uh, move to a virtual race. So that website went up today. Um, so this is going to be a new experience for us all. Since we, in uh, our last race, we had nearly 400 people attend that, while that's great, uh, we think it's still uh, a little bit, uh, you know, of a safety risk to gather that many people in the street uh, around the community center. So we're going to move to what most of the uh, running community has done for the, since the onset of COVID, and that has moved to a virtual race. So how that's going to work is uh, you, you'll sign up on the run sign up site, just like usual, and Jackie has put that on uh, the link to that on our village website. And you'll be able to run a 3.1 uh, uh, mile course, that's a 5K, or a one mile, or do both. You could still do the Tuckahoe Challenge. 
and you'll be able to enter your times in on the website. So we're going to offer a premium and it's going to be a gaiter. So a gaiter is a, a piece of uh, cloth that goes around your neck and you could pull it up and, and pull it down. Um, it's usually uh, used when it's cold weather, but uh, COVID has caused yet another use for gaiters. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to be showing that premium off in a couple weeks. It's right now being designed. Um, so anybody who wants to get that gator, it'll have a Tuckahoe symbol on it. Uh, uh, you're going to have to sign up for the Tuckahoe challenge, but we're going to be doing a couple of fun promos over the month. Uh, we're going to, um, you know, a part of that will uh, see how many members of the board I can get to participate in the, uh, in the challenge. I was year. afraid she was going to say that. <laughs> I'm glad she said that. <laughs> so, um, I would be glad. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to thank the, uh, the Raffiani Family Foundation, who is our platinum donor, um, and for coming through this year. Uh, we'll have a lot less expenses this year since it's going to be a virtual race. So the um, cost of running the race is also considerably cheaper. So I hope everybody takes a look at our website and uh, signs up for that. It'll be uh, between the 6th and the 20th is when we'll... Um, have people run their virtual race and enter their times into the site. And then on the last thing I, I wanted to say was again on the, uh, you know, the census, I can't say how important it is. You heard all of, all of the grant money that we're applying for, you know, and if you go look at the current postings of all of uh, the uh, villages and towns in Westchester, unfortunately, probably those areas that need at least have the highest census response. Exactly what was said today. Yeah, so um, so we really need to reach out to all of our neighbors, encourage them. Any if there's any barriers to that, um, you know, please let let us know in Village Hall. We we're happy to help. Um, you know, whatever folks need to uh, to get their census replies in. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Hal. Um, <laughs> Trustee Andino. So I need I need glasses. It's written down, but I didn't see it. Um, so I just wanted to thank the Tuckahoe Environmental and Sustainability Committee for a very successful and fun summer solstice this weekend, virtual summer solstice. Uh, we uh, were planning for our Earth Day and um, because of COVID, we, we had a meeting and we talked about whether or not we should still have it and decided to try something different and virtual. And I really have to thank Erin uh, Provenzano for just taking the lead on it. I asked her if she would just lead it and she, she owned it and she recorded pre-recorded a lot of videos. We had a lot of um, entertainment uh, from the high school students. We had everything for all ages. We had book readings for, for kids and we also had, bee, I felt like I went to bee school just listening to the beekeeping uh, segment. So thank you to, the, to Donald and the entire uh, test committee, Mike Giordano is here. I don't know if there's anyone else that I'm not shouting out, but thank you all for all your hard work and your efforts. Um, I think it's something that uh, will be used as a model to, for other environmental committees. So um, it was really a successful event. Um, I also wanted to thank Bundles of Joy. It's a not-for-profit um, out of Bronxville actually, who provides uh, diapers and uh, clothing for families with children, predominantly six and under. They're going to uh, work with me to provide those services here in Tuckahoe, and they'll be at the community center on June 1st. I'm sorry, on uh, August 1st. <laughs> and I'm just getting text messages from all the the uh, Tuckahoe environmental people. You forgot summer solstice. Uh, so on, <laughs> so on August 1st, uh, they will be at the community center. Uh, to distribute diapers, formula, um, clothing, brand new clothes from Old Navy. They got a big shipment. And so I'm really grateful to them and I want to thank them um, for their generosity. If you are interested and, and would like to be a part of this distribution, um, you, can, you, know, you can email me at the village at ondino at tuckahoe-ny.com and um, I'll get you signed up. And now that's really it for me, Mayor. <laughs> I just want to take this thank opportunity you. to thank them as well, you know, for a job great done. I'm sorry to interject, but I, I also forgot, and I'm texting Omira to get in there, but thank you for hosting an amazing event. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry about the cherry tree. 
<laughs> okay. And, Don, and Donald, the mic, if you want to say something later on, you're free to. Okay. Um, and that'll bring us to Trustee Gina Lee. Hi, everybody. Hi. Um, first off, I wanted to let everybody know that the senior citizens are doing well, but they're very bored. Um, <laughs> So a lot of our TACO seniors who have access to Zoom have been taking part in many activities. Jennifer Vetramau has been doing a wonderful job keeping mem all the members engaged in, in the activities. Tuesday at 10 a.m., Trivial Pursuit. I never joined in on that one. 11.45 is Chair Exercise with Evie. 1 p.m., Members Connect. That's just time for all the seniors to chat. 3 p.m., ch uh, Chair ch Tai Chi with Domingo. And on Thursdays, 10 a.m. Tai Chi meditation with Norma. 11.45 is chair exercise with Evie. And 1 p.m., Greg and I are always on playing bingo with the senior. That's a whole lot of fun. Um, also, Lawrence Hospital has contacted Jennifer today. They are going to donate 150 face shields um, to our seniors. George Latimer's office is serving all senior centers um, about activities. He will be one of our guest speakers over the next couple of weeks on our Members Connect call. So that will be a lot of fun to listen to because our seniors cannot wait to get together. <laughs> They're trying to uh, meet up at you know restaurants, sit outside, or people's backyards. They're sneaking around. <laughs> um, also, uh, on June 28th, we said goodbye to our legend of Tuckahoe, who will never be forgotten, uh, Mayor Phil White. I had the pleasure of getting to know Mayor White during my campaign. I was honored to receive his endorsement and was humbled by his invaluable knowledge of the process and by how hard he had work, worked for myself and my running mates. In his time may, as mayor, he led us through urban renewal. He moved Village Hall to the Old Main School, and perhaps his greatest accomplishment was creation of the History Committee, which began as part of the 2001 celebration of our village centennial. Our former First Lady, Alice White, know we all mourn with you, and Mayor White is in our prayers along with you and your family. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Trustee Lee. Um, I, you guys covered a lot of what I thought I was going to be talking about tonight, so thank you. Um, so it just leaves it up to me to say that I am still continuing to do um, Meet the Mayor every Wednesday, except unfortunately we have to do it via the Zoom platform. So every Wednesday, 10 a.m., go to the Tuckahoe website, click on the News tab, and you'll get right into the Zoom meeting with the Mayor. And we can talk about anything you'd like to talk about. Um, this, there's one thing I want to just mention. It's concerning Andrus, which, as we know, occupies um, space in Village Hall. Myself and the Village Board have received numerous letters from parents uh, about Andrus. The hope is that Andrus will be opening in September, but I want to make it quite clear to all the parents and the residents, um, it is not up to Village Hall as to whether or not Andrus will open. Andrus will open based on COVID-19 and or the ability or willingness of the parents to bring their children back to Andrus. With that being said, uh, knowing the economic climate, we are in talks with the Andrus um, executives as to how we can help facilitate them returning back to Village Hall. And by that, I mean we will exercise prudent and financial responsibilities when we do have those conversations with Andrus. But I just want it out there that it is not up to the Tuckahoe, the village of Tuckahoe, whether or not Andrus will be opening up again. We want them back here. They're a great tenant here in the village and we know and value the service that they provide to the parents. So hopefully as people begin to go back to work, that will allow people uh, to bring their children back to Andrus for daycare. 
Um, the only other thing I want to talk about um, is police. I know we're all reading the newspaper or watching the news. We see what's happened in Texas, Florida, California. We don't want that to happen here. We are doing so well right now in this region. So please, everyone, maintain social distancing. Please wear face coverings when you're out in public. Um, our restaurants, our business establishments here are doing a fantastic job in enticing the patrons to come back. I believe they're doing it in a safe way. So let's keep up um, what we're doing so that we can continue to get back to some type of normalcy. Um, and again, I finally, I just would like to offer my condolences to the White family. Um, I had the pleasure of, of meeting with, with the History Committee probably every Wednesday since I've been on the Village Board. And, um, you know, it was everything you could do every time you went up there to, to not accept a, a token or, a, or an artifact from Phil White whenever you went up there. You go, oh, look, I got this, you know, this button from when Nixon came through the village or something along those lines. Uh, you know, it's been said by uh, people before me, you know, when you think about Tuckahoe, Phil White comes right alongside that. So. Uh, he's going to be sorely missed, but the legacy that he's left behind is, is priceless. So um, with that being said, this is the second opportunity to address the board on any particular business item that you'd like to discuss. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Pete up to Tanya again. I'm sorry, I got my video off. I'll turn it on. Okay. Uh, there I am. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you to all the, uh, the village officials, the village workers, and especially to the highway department and the police department for all the hard work you've done during these difficult times. And I just want to reach shout out to the highway guys, Frank, you guys are the best, and Johnny on the police. You know how I feel about you guys. You are truly the best. So thank you all. Thank you, Vito. And I would, um, on that note, I would also like to thank everyone who participated in tonight's meeting. It's so important that we do hear from our residents here in the community. So with that. If I may, uh, Mr. Mayor, it's Mary O'Donnell. Yes, Mary. Yeah, if I just may quickly, I know it's getting late, raise another topic and just kudos to the Sustainability Committee and I know the committee set up a meeting in January to talk about community choice aggregation. I think it is a wonderful program. It gives our residents and our small business owners an opportunity to get their energy from 100% renewables and that at a fixed price. And that is a real um, important service that the village can offer to uh, that the village government can offer to our residents. So uh, number one, have you followed up? Uh, have you hired uh, or selected rather um, Westchester Power to be your administrator? Where are we going with this? Can we move it along? Because it's a great program. You know, that's a great question, Mary. That was in full swing. Um, we were about to, you know, give them the green light to start reaching out to the community. And then, you know, what happened. I know. Uh, so it is something that, yeah, we are. Um, speaking, I believe speaking for the board is we were going into, we were opting into the program. Yes. Okay. Um, have, has the board um, passed the local law to become a CCA? Have you taken that step? I think you have. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Yes. So then the next, so the next step is just to select Westchester Power to be your administrator. Right. There's steps that have to be taken. They have to, um, initiate community outreach. Uh, we already had, I know we are, I'm trying to remember when it was, was sometime late winter that we had a, we had a, uh, a residence meeting that was dedicated simply to that program. But as I said, it, the wheels were turning and then the virus came along. Yeah. Well, well, as I understand the, how the program works, um, 
You passed the local law. You had your public yeah, hearing. You passed that. the local law. We actually did that back in 2015. Right, right. So, so to move it forward, I, that's where I'm coming from. Uh, to move it forward, have, has the village said to Westchester Power or Sustainable Hudson Valley, have you said, we select you as our administrator, at which point then they can begin the outreach and the whole program um, can, can move no, forward? But, Mr. Mayor, if I may, the, 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 yeah. how it starts is that the, the public outreach is kind of the, the first key portion of it. So again, we passed the local law about in 2015, then comes the kind of the public outreach. If you recall, in the public outreach portion, there's actually a substantial public outreach that needs to, needs to take place. So we had the public outreach at the community center. That was the first step. Uh, actually, at the seniors, that was the second step. But they require a significant amount more public outreach. And you're right. You know, four months ago, kind of the world stopped on us. Um, and we just need to get back into that because they weren't doing that in-person public outreach. So um, that's kind of what we need to do. We need to get the public outreach back going forward and then kind of move from there. And okay, okay, so, so excuse, excuse me. So then, as I'm hearing, you have selected, you have selected uh, Westchester Power and Sustainable Hudson Valley. You are in the program. You have selected them. They are your administrators. They are going to be doing the public outreach. So you've yes. taken that step. Yeah, we're taking. Yeah, absolutely. They're the okay, ones that great. are. Yeah, they're coordinating that program. We're going with them. Absolutely. And Matter of fact, Mary, here's his card. <laughs> Dan Welsh. I still got his card right here. So. Oh, David's card. Okay. No, Dan Welsh from uh, Westchester Power. Oh, Dan Welsh. Okay, great. Yeah, so, Welsh. so. Um, are, are, are you are they thinking about because I know some other communities are thinking about doing zoom outreach meetings have you have you talked about um, Dan about doing some zoom outreach meetings so that we can get it going I have not s spoken to Dan since the since that community outreach meeting that we had here in the community okay. center again they were taking they were they took the ball and we were running with it we were just waiting for them to come back okay probably okay. we can follow up mary yeah yeah, yeah i really i really appreciate that to find out when they're going out to contract and let's get this thing going because it's a great sure. program Absolutely. congratulations to the board for for doing that yeah uh, thank you thank you and, and um, just in okay so uh, that being mayor, said, uh, I just want to say, I'm sorry, I just want to say one thing about the committee, the Tuckahoe thing, the environmental stuff that we did this weekend. Uh, I want to thank uh, Omira because this is sort of her brainchild. I know she won't admit it, but um, it, uh, she came up with the idea in May, and then Frank and the team, we all worked together and was able to put this together very quickly. It's hard to put together what we did in such a short time. There are 11 videos up, so if for you that haven't seen it, I know Gina, Gina's checked some of the videos out, but we have videos on Facebook, we have some stuff on Instagram, and we also have stuff on YouTube of all the events that we did. And you really should check it out because it's very um, educational and fun, but also a little upsetting. I did a uh, video on street trash, and um, there's a ton of street trash around the train station and outside of some of the restaurants with the throwing cigarettes and the DPW can only do so much. Uh, so I've made some suggestions on that video. We're going to keep doing it because uh, the street trash problem means that that stuff's going to go into the Bronx River because it goes into the, uh, into the storm drain into the Bronx River. And, and Frank's working on a project to try to, you know, eliminate that with some grates, but we really we need to stop throwing trash. And I know probably everyone here doesn't, but somebody is because I found gloves and um, it's being thrown out right on our street, right in front of the, there was a mask thrown right in front of our village hall, uh, rubber gloves. So I, I just like to say that as, as residents, if you, we want to respect our community, we want to respect um, the people here, we really need to, to, to look out for that. And, and, and if people don't, then, you know, I'll talk to the chief and maybe we can get some nice, uh, uh, litter tickets because once you start giving people tickets they'll stop dropping trash but anyways thank you and I, again Erin Provenzano did all the heavy lifting on this she did most of the videos she had a statement I, um, she wanted me to read but I'm not because it's out of time but mayor I'm going to send it to the board and we're going to post it on social media so that people can see what she had to say but thank you Good enough. thank you Mike okay last... oh sorry 
is there time just quickly uh, uh, for resolution of, my name is Jenny please Steinhagen. yes state your name and, and address please um Jenny Steinhagen on South High Street and uh for resolution number one I believe it was suggested that community input might be solicited I was wondering if there was any information about next steps regarding ideas for the playground at Main Street well I think yeah I, I think David mentioned that um resurfacing of certain areas there and upgrade to the equipment the playground equipment so mayor if i can i jump in <laughs> you, you don't absolutely so we do so to get the grant in we have a very basic outline of what we're looking to do there um we actually had some assistance from westchester county kind of put it together but that does not mean we have the actual pieces of equipment selected by any means or the color of the padding or any of those types of things so if we get approved for this, we're definitely going to be looking for a lot more public input about what's, you know, what the actual equipment goes there. Super. So that's post approval. So to be continued. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I think that's it. I think we've covered all our bases tonight. I actually have one more thing there. I just noticed uh, the winner of the raffle for the summer solstice, it's, which is a, a, a Bill a juicer is Nancy Height Nort. Um, so congratulations to Nancy. We'll be delivering her juicer tomorrow. Okay. And what can we expect to have by noontime then? Strawberry uh, smoothies or anything like that? Nancy, I don't know. I don't know. We're going to put some pressure on Nancy then. Well, everyone, seriously, again, thank you for participating in tonight's meeting. Uh, please continue to be safe. Stay healthy, and I make a motion to adjourn this meeting. Do I have a second? Second. Until next time, see you, Taco. Good night. Mayor? Hi. Did you oh. want to do a moment of silence? Thank you, Camille. Thank you. Good help is not hard to find. It's, <laughs> here it is, written right here. And I have my right So please, before we end this meeting, can we please observe a moment of silence for Mayor Phil White? Okay. Thank you again. Thank you, Camille. Say um, again. I just wanted to say that uh, once I get the juicer, I'll uh, come and do a demonstration. Oh, okay. Do we have to bring our own fruit? <laughs> well, it'll be more like carrots and apples and um, vegetable juices. Okay. All right. Don't forget kale. Put kale in there for him. Yes. Yes. It'll be <laughs> kale and all the good stuff. All right. This isn't pick on the mayor time now in the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to wish everybody a happy rest of the summer and everybody please stay safe. Go out if you're comfortable and enjoy our local restaurants sit outside. It's actually very nice. Thank you. All right. See you guys in September. Good night. Good night, Good night. everybody.